Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, we are going to be diving into the Aries full moon on October 17th, 2024, looking at the galactic astrology of this lunation, zeroing in on some of the key alignments, the key star alignments, and also looking at the Sabian symbols and the galactic heritage cards that I pulled for the highest guidance for all who are watching this video. Thank you so much for being with me today. Before we get into the astrology, I would like to invite you to a class I am teaching, Astrology Basics with Reiki. It is on Saturday, October 12th at 8 a.m. Hawaii time. And in this class, we are diving deeply into the elements and the modes in astrology. So the elements and the modes in the zodiac signs, as well as the elements and the modes in the astrological houses. And this class includes a live class that's recorded in case you cannot attend live. It also includes a private group that you will become a member of. And in that group, you will have immediate access to two lessons that I recorded about the elements and the modes in the astrological houses. So you can watch those video lessons before the live class or after the live class, whatever your preference is. And also in that group, you will have access to the class recordings after the live class. So it's really a wonderful class. We do a Reiki journey to help with the integration of the astrological teachings and bringing into your awareness what it all means for you. And also in the class, we look at student chart examples. So I find creative ways to include those and weave those in. I made a separate video more about the class and you can learn more about it in the description. There will be a link for the class and also that other video in case that would be something supportive to you on your astrological journey, your healing journey, and your current moment of spiritual awakening as a human being on earth right now. All right, so looking at our full moon, it is occurring at 24 degrees of Aries and 34 minutes. You can see here the glyph for Aries as well as the glyph for Mars. Planet Mars rules the zodiac sign of Aries. And this full moon is occurring on October 17th at 1.26 a.m., Hawaii time. So you can adjust to your time zone, see when that is occurring for you. And this is not a full moon that we're going to miss by any means. It is big and loud and bold. And here I am in many different ways. And I think one of the ways it is so is that it's capping off the, it's like the final bracket, the omega bracket of the eclipse season we just had, which really started with the Virgo new moon, then we had the Pisces lunar eclipse, then we had the Libra solar eclipse, and then now we're having the full moon that is the unit, the set, the pair with the Libra solar eclipse. So this is putting that final bracket on eclipse season and certainly doing so in a very, <laughs> I'm wanting to say dramatic way. And yeah, so we'll see what that's all about. Let me know in the comments below, how was eclipse season for you? How are you doing? How's it going? And let me know. I would be curious to hear about your experiences of this eclipse season. 
So Aries full moon, multidimensional healing action and leadership. Why am I saying that? Well, for many different reasons here, the moon at the time of the full moon will be conjunct Chiron retrograde in Aries. So it is a chance for us to really align deeply with the Chiron archetype, which is all about healing and teaching and mentorship. It's the rainbow bridge of light. It's this asteroid that connects between the orbits of Saturn, the outer limit of the visible planets, which contains three-dimensional reality, physical reality, even duality, what's possible, what's not, our sense of limitation and restriction. And Uranus, the planet of unlimited possibilities and no restrictions and freedom and innovation and rebellion if and when and as necessary, and a planet very focused on the future and awakening, and awakening sometimes with disruption or chaos or moments of unpredictability and uncertainty, which I think we're all feeling. And so Chiron is that bridge between Saturn and Uranus. And it's feeling like we're invited to be a bridge at this full moon, a bridge of courageous healing action of healthy individuation and a bridge of peace and harmony, balance, beauty, love with our beautiful sun and Libra. In medical astrology, Aries zodiac sign rules the head, the brain with the sun, moon, and mercury, the eyes, the upper teeth, the motor nerves, also with Mars and Sagittarius. So these are the parts of your body where you may feel this energy coming to a head, (laughs) you know, there can be energization of these areas and definitely an invitation to support the head, the brain, the eyes, the teeth, the motor nerves, you know, those nerves that get you going, that get you walking and moving in life, shaking out stagnant energy, flowing stagnant energy. So looking back to our theme, multidimensional healing action and leadership, the moon conjoined Chiron retrograde, inviting us to be a bridge, a bridge of the Aries energy that's all about self and a bridge of the Libra energy, which is all about the other. The moon is also conjunct a beautiful star, Akamar star in Eridanus constellation, which we will look at in the next slide. The moon is also conjunct Eris at 24 degrees Aries in 56 minutes. So this is a very tight conjunction within 30 minutes. So very, very close here. And Eris is a dwarf planet. She is a powerful goddess energy. And she's connected also to Xena, the warrior princess. If you may remember that television series called Xena. I know I love that series when I was growing up and felt like I wanted to be, I loved her costumes. I mean, let me just say it. Xena, the warrior princess's costumes were like, now that's how I want to do this. <laughs> so Eris Xena is this archetype of the female warrior goddess. Eris in Greek and Roman mythology was connected to the goddess of discord, who instigated controversy amongst the goddesses 
tempting them and tantalizing them with an apple that she threw for the fairest of them all and let them decide who that was, who was the most beautiful. So this instigator of a petty kind of argument, a petty contest there. So she's a goddess of chaos, a goddess of discord, a goddess of spiritual warriorship. And leaning into more of that Xena archetype, she was originally named Xena, which is why this is part of her her story here. Leaning into that Xena archetype, we can really think about being a warrior for justice, for just cause, and fighting battles that actually have a reason behind them, that it's not just creating chaos or disruption for the sake of chaos and disruption, that there's a a real aim, a clear aim, a clear motivation there. This is a very powerful archetype. We're still certainly learning about these dwarf planets. I've also been aware of astrologers saying that Eris is linked to your soul purpose, your soul destiny. Now she's a very slow moving body. And so everybody alive has Eris and Aries. So Eris has been holding down that Aries energy and for many years, and I think is really asking us to embody that Aries energy in a healthy way way to clearly and directly individuate and be motivated and be pioneering and be ambitious and go for what we feel is right and just and true and follow our hearts and follow our dreams and be sovereign and to shed the negative and more shadow expressions of Aries, which can be combative and aggressive, warring, warlike, and win-lose situations where the ends justify the means and just atrocities can be committed in the lower expression of Aries ruled by Mars, god of war. So the moon conjunct Eris and also Chiron, this is really, really tender here. And this is where we can also see in shadow expressions, people acting out of their wounding and unhealed trauma. So if this is happening on the world stage, or maybe you're noticing it in yourself, to certainly have compassion and to invite healing into those parts of yourself that may be activated in that way. And also understand that if you are witnessing others or you're witnessing collective expressions of that to, you know, if you're a Reiki practitioner, send Reiki, send healing light, send love, send healing energy, and really don't engage <laughs> would be uh, my advice and my tactic for what to do to to not meet them at that frequency, but to be the observer, be the witness and hold space and send healing energy and don't get involved in it. Don't lower your frequency. Keep raising your frequency, raising your energy and take care of your energy if you need boundaries, if you need withdrawal, if you need quiet time, if you need alone time here. Aries is an agent of self. So do what you need to do for your own healing, for your own needs, taking care of your own needs, prioritizing yourself. So the sun is with Arcturus and Spica stars. We will look at that in the next slide. But what's so interesting here is this very dynamic configuration, a cardinal grand cross, a cardinal grand square of Chiron and the moon opposite the sun, Chiron, moon, and Eris opposite the sun, making it a full moon in square 
with Pluto at that last degree of Capricorn recently stationed direct opposite Mars in Cancer. Mars in Cancer in its pre-retrograde shadow territory as it will be stationing retrograde in December of this year. So we're having a very long time of Mars and Cancer. We'll get Mars and Leo, but then we'll get Mars and Cancer again in its retrograde cycle. This dynamic configuration, we're actually moving into it prior to the full moon. So it's actually on October 13th, the sun will square Mars at 22 degrees Libra. So we will feel that influx of Martian energy starting October 13th. This can be more energy, more physical energy, taking action. This can be a change in our consciousness. This can be more motivation, ambition, drive. This can be more energy and focus in our relationships and our sense of home, family, roots, safety, emotional security, cancer, zodiac sign. This could also potentially provoke conflicts and issues of security and land boundaries and home boundaries and these kinds of things here. So again, if you notice that triggerability either within yourself or within your relationships, if you're observing it more collectively to choose peace and choose love and choose neutrality, choose to pause, choose to take a breath, a deep breath, and recenter yourself because this can be an activated kind of trigger friendly, <laughs> trigger friendly, triggerable energy here. But it can be motivating, it can be drive, it can be focus, it can be action, it can be clear and direct. Like, this is my path forward, this is the way to go. This is what we're going to do here. So then we'll have the full moon where we get this configuration as the sun is separating from that exact square with Mars. We'll have the full moon where we're feeling this grand cross. And then actually on October 22nd, there is the exact sun square Pluto. So sun at final degree of Libra square Pluto at the final degree of Capricorn. So we're, we're kind of in this portal of sun, Mars, Pluto from October 13th to October 22nd. So just to be aware of that sun square Pluto, this is like a deep need for transformation. This is deep transformational energy, energy that's motivated to transform. Again, powerful action being compelled, powerful transformations and changes in consciousness and issues of relationships coming to the fore, peace, balance, issues of hierarchical structures. And this could be very revealing of the weaknesses of hierarchical structures, for example, or aligning oneself with powerful structures that actually are helpful and would be beneficial to carry over into the new earth paradigm here. So finding balance to between emotional security, financial, material security. And if it feels like all of that is kind of in flux and kind of like uncertain or unstable, or there's like a lot of changes and you're not sure how things are going to settle down to just understand that that is part of the atmosphere and we're all feeling it. 
and how we choose to respond to it is our choice here. Again, choosing not to be triggered and reactive, but to take pause, deep breaths, stay in peace, stay in love, send the healing energy, and you can really support the collective consciousness, strengthening those higher frequencies as you do so. So we're going to look at the Mars-Pluto star alignments in another slide as well. So Mars will perfect its opposition to Pluto on November 3rd. So yes, just a few days prior to the U.S. presidential election. So we have this volatile energy of Mars opposite Pluto for really the month of October. We are feeling that. And how we can work with this individually is to say yes to action that will transform ourselves to also prioritize self-care, prioritize yourself, be tender and compassionate and present with your emotions and your sense of security that may feel challenged or unstable at this time. Again, understanding that many of us are feeling that and to be grateful for what you have, be grateful for the support that you have, get support if you need support, and certainly take care of yourself in the ways that you need to self-soothe. And if this is feeling like, oh, just so much, like go for a walk, connect in nature, move the energy through your body physically. That is one healthy way that you can release that energy. So taking in this cardinal grand square as a whole, this feels like an important manifestation, corridor, and gateway of pure potential for, you know, I'm thinking of like the pressure that diamonds undergo before they become those sparkling, shimmering beautiful jewels, that there is this sense of pressure, there is this sense of urgency even, and to know that there's this healing, supportive energy, the inner teacher, the inner mentor, the inner guide can emerge and really assist us in navigating, maybe feeling pulled in a lot of different directions or stuck or like, you know, out with the old and in with the new. This can be resistance that is being dismantled and being let go. This can also feel like everything familiar is slipping away and everything known is slipping away and everything that's certain is slipping away and we're being invited into the new. We're invited into our next steps. We're invited into how can we be masterful creators of our own reality? How can we be sovereign and free agents of the world in which we want to live and play and love and grow and nurture ourselves and be one with Mother Earth and be one with the cosmos? So really, really interesting moon here. Let's look at some of the star alignments now, because as you can see, looking at this chart, there are so many, and I'm just going to focus in on the alignments that are a part of this Cardinal Grand Cross. So except for Saturn, <laughs> because I love talking about Saturn. So Saturn with Atronar and Moon and Eris with Akramar. I'm pulling in Saturn because Saturn is aligned to the star Atronar in Eridanus constellation. And the Moon and Eris are aligned with another star, Akamar, in that same constellation, Eridanus, the starry river of life. And so 
Achernar means the end of the river, the mouth of the river. Akamar also means the end of the river. So this star is not actually very bright now, but it's thought that back in the time of the ancient Greek astronomers that it was a brighter star and thus overpowered even Achernar and was seen as the end of the river, whereas now Achernar is the brighter star and we can identify it as the mouth of the river in Eridanus, which is just this massive, beautiful river constellation. So this constellation and Achernar in particular are linked to rapid changes. So we've been having this energy all year with Saturn conjoining our Trinar, retrograding conjoining our Trinar, you know, just really bringing it in to the forefront here. Rapid changes, evolution, healing, releasing, letting go, and becoming more of the light bringer. So I associate this constellation with the angelic elf realms. When you reach Eridanus and these stars at a higher vibration, that is what I am shown. I access this constellation and these stars through Reiki energy where I'm very clear that I only want to interact with the enlightened realms and beings of this realm. And what I'm shown is just an absolutely magical, ornate, natural landscape and planets that are just like lush, garden, beautiful paradise planets with rivers and waterfalls and streams and mountains and just so fertile and lush with life and beautiful angelic elven beings with like very pure auric energies and telepathic communication and much like the elves in Lord of the Rings, Tolkien's elves, where they're just high vibrational beings. And these are not the warring elves. In those stories, they are at war. In this land that I visit, linked to Eridanus, there is no war. They're totally in their pure and enlightened state of consciousness, and they understand how difficult it is to be on earth and they also understand that like for me when I journeyed there they only let me stay there so long because it's so perfect and loving and blissful that I can want to stay in that state and not come back <laughs> so what happens is they say, you must go now, and then I, I actually have to come back, and it's it's it can be really hard to come back, and even as blessed as my life is and everything, it's just such a pure, heavenly, beautiful, magical place when I visit this river constellation. So it's linked to the river of life, Eridanus. It's linked to the river of peace. We work with these in holy fire, Reiki. So it's got that pure energy helping us on our healing journey with releasing and letting go and being in divine flow and being in abundance consciousness. So in the higher frequencies, Akamar is linked to one who is blessed with a direct line to the source of all being and who is able to bring back something to fortify his or her position in the world. It's linked to a high degree of spiritual attunement. And I found this on astrologyking.com because I'm not very familiar with Akamar. I wanted to check into some of what I could find on this star, what's been written. And that definitely resonates with what I experience of this Eridanus constellation. So some of the shadows of Akamar include a false show of all is well, more than the real truth of the situation, 
a pretender to honor and fame rather than one who really has them. So knowing that these shadow expressions may be coming out, I'm thinking particularly on the world stage with all the different dramatics and political events and all those energies that are out there. And if you recognize any of this in yourself, obviously work with it as well so that we can not have it needing to manifest so loudly and dramatically out in the world. So to just be aware of that, to be humble, to be clear on who you are and what's going on, and to be able to discern what is true, what is false, what is real, what is not. And you can even call upon Saturn and Neptune to help with that and help clarify that. Call upon the angelic elves of Eridanus to help with discernment if there is any kind of this falsity and deceit to see with clear eyes the situation. This strong light bringer energy is also very important because if things are really triggered and lots of conflict and lots of things that, you know, are triggering others, are triggering you, are being done that could make somebody really angry or furious or anything like that, or there's this like invitation to engage in battle in some way, shape, or form to not engage and instead be a light bringer and to understand that that can be your role in any of your environments in your daily life. Just be the light bringer. Don't play into these shadow expressions of Aries, of the Cardinal Grand Cross, of any of the, he said, she said, I'm right, you're wrong, this is true, this is not. Just be in your light bringer, be in your inner truth, be a beacon of light and love and peace. And that really can contribute in, in helpful ways, life-changing ways, not just for yourself, but can really ripple out and affect a lot of other people very positively. And certainly the earth and the animals and the plants and the collective energy field of this planet very positively. This constellation and these stars are also linked with rain, rivers, and streams. So we could see more of that in the news. And certainly there are so many different hurricane events and storm events. It's like every time I'm online, I see something about some storm somewhere. So this can be a manifestation. So sending prayers, continued prayers, continued Reiki to all those who were affected by Hurricane Helene and then all who may be affected by any future hurricanes or flooding and all the different flooding events, you know, I don't even know specifically what all of those are, but to just send healing energy to all of those as well, as the earth is clearly in this very powerful cleansing process, humanity is in a very powerful cleansing process. In what ways can you be preemptive about that and facilitate within yourself a gentle cleansing process again, so it's not needing to be projected into three-dimensional reality in these really awful ways, you know, how can you internalize that sense of cleansing and purification? That's a wonderful contemplation and then actually take some divinely guided action on that too. So the next alignments we're going to talk about is that the sun is conjunct, it's in a conjunct alignment powerful strong alignment with Arcturus star in Boots constellation. You see Arcturus here. He is the hunter turned farmer. This is a star of adventure, of pathfinding. So the sun with Arcturus, according to Bernadette Brady, is to break new ground and be willing to explore unheard of options. 
one who will either embody this spirit of adventure or be drawn to those who do, strong or new leadership emerges. So in what way can you embody that pathfinding energy, that way showing energy, that sense of adventure, and you're going for it, you're being guided. And so taking action and really trusting your guides, trusting your process in the galactic realms, Arcturus is linked to this beautiful, pure, loving energy that is perfectly balanced. They are enlightened group consciousness that no longer even need to be concentrated in one planet or one star system. Arcturus is a stargate, a portal to other worlds. So there's that sense of being in the portal coming through Arcturus star. There's that healing support. There's that light lighting your way forward, bringing in divine guidance. What are your next steps? What is the path ahead? And maybe you can't see the whole path, but you can see whatever your next step is and to trust your guidance, to trust your process and to know that you are supported by this loving energy. And the Sun Arcturus alignment is also kind of echoing the Moon Chiron. If you're needing healing at this time to invite Reiki to heal you, to invite the support of another healing practitioner or a healing group, a healing class that can support you at this time, or maybe it's you sharing your own healing gifts because the sun is also conjunct speak a star in Virgo constellation. It's in this sheath of wheat that she is holding here. And this star is a star of knowledge and learning, and it's linked to gifts and talents. And what are your gifts and talents? Maybe you're becoming aware of healing gifts and talents that you have, or your next level of your own healing gifts and talents, and feeling inspired to share those gifts with others or deepen your relationship with those gifts and talents. So the sun with Spica can be a talented person to admire those who excel in their profession. It can be a tendency to be a fan, but the need to claim this gift for oneself, to recognize if you are seeing so much glory and admiring somebody who is outside of you for their particular gifts and talents, that you also, like they are mirroring to you your own potential, your own gifts and talents, and you may need to take some classes or get some training, have some support in remembering and cultivating your own gifts and talents, but to know that that which you admire in others is also a part of you, that which you disdain or hate or despise in somebody else. It's also an invitation to look at that within yourself. That which you admire, you also have that within yourself. So knowing that quality of this star. It can also bring bright ideas and new solutions, and we absolutely need as many of those as we possibly can. Spica is a very powerful divine feminine star linked to goddess lineages. So the Arcturian galactic group consciousness and their healing energy is present. The divine feminine and enlightened goddess energies are also very, very present here, can help us remember, can help us wake up our gifts and talents and really connect to that sense of sisterhood and motherhood and healing and bringing about the higher frequencies of the divine feminine within ourselves. I notice Spica often in the charts of people who are very gifted and talented, 
beautiful designers or they have a way with creating, you know, wonderful parties, wonderful gatherings, great at decorating. Maybe they're incredible cooks, graphic artists, graphic designers, artisans can just make whatever they touch just become so beautiful. So I really, really love this star. And this can be a very creative alignment here. Maybe you're being and guided to create something beautiful and connect to that pure light of beauty for yourself. So looking at the other end of this Cardinal Grand Cross, we have Mars and Pluto. And Mars is opposite Lyra Ring Nebula. So it will have been exactly opposite Lyra Ring Nebula just a little while prior to the full moon, but at the time of the full moon, it is still in this opposition. This is Lyra Ring Nebula, this gorgeous like flower shooting out of this eye. And what it is, it's it's actually a white dwarf. So it's at a star at the final stage of its evolution. And it's thought to be this stargate portal. And what I tend to see with it in journeys is that souls are coming in to the Milky Way galaxy through this portal that this is very connected to the origin of humanoid consciousness, humanoid bodies and societies and species at the very beginning of the Milky Way, like souls and beings coming in and creating this new way of relating to existence. And likewise, it is, it's an exit point for from the Milky Way galaxy when souls are graduating from this galaxy and moving on into higher realms of consciousness, higher galactic experiences that don't have the duality and the density of the Milky Way. And so we can really connect with the higher frequencies of the ancient Lyrans for more information on our own soul origins, human origins, and we can also connect to the Lyrans who and the other souls who have moved beyond the Milky Way galaxy through this nebula and into higher realms of consciousness and even journey through this nebula and reaching into those future time streams of the Lyrans and the descendants, the ascendants, those who really don't even incarnate in Milky Way galaxy anymore because they've completely moved on. So touching into that, tapping into that pure consciousness, we are supported in that. Pluto, on the other hand, is aligning with a Ladfar star in Lyra constellation. So we have these two different parts of Lyra. Lyra constellation is has been called many different things in history. So the Lyra of Orpheus given to Orpheus by Apollo, this lyre crafted from the shell of a tortoise by Mercury or Hermes. It's been called the harp star, the hero's harp, King David's harp, the manger of the infant savior, the vulture, the great swooping eagle, the swooping vulture with a lyre in its beak. This information is from Bernadette Brady's book of fixed stars here. So very connected to music, musical instruments. It's got a touch of this hero and king energy. It's got a touch of the Christ consciousness, the divine, the manger, where the Christ was born. It has a touch of the vulture, the eagle, so the birds as well here. So I link Lyra with the galactic birds, some of the power flying galactic bird constellations along with Cygnus and Aquila, Cygnus the swan, Aquila the eagle. 
So there is that sense of flight and action and freedom and a motivation towards action and flight and freedom and taking a leap of faith and trusting that your wings work and trusting that you know how to fly your belt for it and also taking that higher perspective on any kind of issues that are arising, quarrels, conflicts, news, drama, disagreements, you know, opinions being exchanged, all of it to just rise above it and see the higher perspective because we are really being invited so clearly here with these alignments to Lyra to tap into our next level of spiritual evolution. This Lyra Ring Nebula is at the final stage of its spiritual evolution before going into nirvana and pure consciousness, samadhi bliss, you know, unification with all that is that, of course, the souls that are leaving Milky Way can enter a state of being in that for as long as they choose, however they choose. So with this particular alignment here, we're being invited in into a portal between the realms that we can be portals between the realms. We can be a portal between third dimensional, physical, dualistic reality, 2024 earth human life, and a portal also to that nirvana, to that samadhi bliss, to that unification consciousness, to enlightened consciousness. How can we be both? How can we be the bridge, sun, moon, Chiron, Aries, Libra, how can we be the bridge? How can we be the portal? The ring nebula is also linked to initiating activity with a solid strategy and careful planning. So it is aligned with Capricorn zodiac sign. So it's got that strategic and planner type of energy, not impulsive, but patiently working towards a goal here. So Mars can be impatient and want it now, but this is showing us to be patient, to understand that it's okay to have long-term goals and to take action steps along the way. And the whole thing is about the journey and about the process anyway, that Arcturus knows this, the star of pathfinding and way showing. So be patient here. Any sense of urgency that is coming up here that to take a breath here and ask, you know, is this sense of urgency being contrived? Where is it coming from? Can I take a breath? Can I actually be patient here? Patient with myself, patient with others, patient with the situation. Motivation is to maintain and improve one's reputation. There's a drive to be respected for one's contribution. Influencers and meaningful contacts and connections can come through this portal. So you can be aware of especially these final three that I mentioned, that motivation, that drive, the meaningful networking to notice if if that element is showing up for you in your career, in your spiritual life, or otherwise in your life, that those are some higher frequency manifestations to look or that this energy is so dynamic with the Grand Cross, it can also be magnetic and magnetizing these right partnerships and right relationships and right communities and opportunities for us here. So to notice those when they do come and to know that you can say yes and take action there to the ones that feel right for you and resonate for you. So I want to read for you now the Sabian symbol for the moon and Eris, and this comes from Dane Roger, an astrological mandala. It's Aries 25, the possibility for man to gain experience at two levels of being. The keynote, the revelation of new potentialities. 
In some unspecified way, the symbol is a guarantee that man can operate successfully at two levels of consciousness if he has previously met the condition mentioned in the preceding symbol. Be open. Be able and willing to shape your translucent mind in the form, revealing spiritual fulfillment, and you will be able to experience life and power on inner as well as outer planes. The implied message is one of faith. Man can only truly experience what he deeply believes he can experience. This is the last stage of this fifth fivefold sequence of cyclic phases. It announces the possibility of a new step in evolution, but it is still only a possibility, a promise. The individual is truly on probation. So have faith here. The Sabian symbol for the sun, Libra 25. The sight of an autumn leaf brings to a pilgrim the sudden revelation of the mystery of life and death. Keynote, the ability to discover in every experience a transcendent or cosmic meaning. The mind open to the multifarious wonders of natural processes because it sees everything with fresh eyes, not only witnesses simple facts but pierces through appearances and perceives the great rhythms of universal life. Without such a faculty, the aspirant to spiritual realities is always looking for elsewhere. Yet the spirit, life, God is ever present here and now, and every death is an omen of rebirth. At this fifth stage of the 41st fivefold sequence of phases of the cosmic process, the implications of the four preceding stages are brought to a new state of consciousness, which is truly the spiritual state. It is a state of clear seeing or seeing through. This world is illusion only to the individual who cannot see through its phenomena and fails to apprehend the reality these phenomena reveal, even as they conceal it. Oh my goodness, how helpful is that? To know the Sabian symbol for the sun is linked to clear seeing. I believe we can all use and benefit from clairvoyance, our clear seeing, and all of our clear senses working really effectively to help us discern what is true, what is false, what is real, what is not. So to invite that clairvoyance, that clear seeing into your reality in your relationships with your relationship to yourself to situations to any kind of world dramas that may be playing out as well and that sabian symbol for the moon and heiress the revelation of new potentialities it's like something really magical is beginning at the time of this full moon which is interesting because it's the end of eclipse season, right? And full moons are usually about completions, closures, things coming to a head, coming to life. But it feels like the new potential, like we're we're still planting important seeds. We were planting important seeds at Libra solar eclipse. We're planting important seeds of potential and possibility at Aries full moon. Because remember, The north node of the moon is still an Aries zodiac sign for the rest of this year and into January. So that Aries energy is still very present, very alive, and it's going to be even more alive as Neptune and Saturn enter Aries zodiac sign beginning next year. So just know that whatever's coming up at the time of this full moon is really powerful and to claim some of that for yourself. Claim with your own sovereignty, within your own creative agency, that which you want to create and that which you want to move forward and be a part of, to be active in your creatorship of your life and of the reality in which you want to live and exist and play and love and grow and thrive. So let's take a look at the Galactic Heritage cards, highest guidance for this full moon and all who are watching.
So the two cards that came out from the Galactic Heritage cards by Lisa Royal Holt were this number 58, Seduction and Addiction, Orion Constellation, Orion Star Species, Present Timeline. And because this card came out, I was only going to pull one. I was like, this is a pretty negative, intense card. Let's pull another one too. The second card I got was Nine Balance, Arcturus Parallel, clearly much higher vibrational star here. So to know that we are working through polarity here, we are working through the ancient traumas of Lyra and war in Lyra, war in Orion, and, you know, different residues of that that were brought onto planet Earth for whatever reason and have yet to be healed. So to do your part, do your work in healing these energies, healing polarity within yourself, healing any kind of attachment to deceits and seductive ideas, seductive ways of being. And I don't mean that just in like sexual seduction, anything that's like seducing you into a certain like state of mind or a certain state of powerlessness or a certain state of like giving your power away, outsourcing your power or wanting something that is actually unhealthy for you. So it can be that addiction side coming to light, addicted to certain mental processes, a certain mental pathway, certain ways of limiting yourself, putting yourself into a box, putting your relationships into a box, putting what is possible for you, constricting it in some way here or also polarizing like good, bad, fear, love, love, hate, whatever it may be, black, white, right, wrong, to stay neutral, stay in that neutrality zone. And as I've come to realize lately, Archangel Michael is a beautiful angel to call upon when we need that neutrality. I didn't realize that that's what I was doing with Archangel Michael for a long time until somebody special reflected that to me, that Archangel Michael is a wonderful angel of neutrality. So when that polar that duality, that triggerability is really, really loud. He is one who can help here. And it's seeming like also the enlightened Arcturians are also ones who can help here, help us move beyond polarity, help us move beyond duality, help us move beyond deceits of our powerlessness and to claim our sovereignty, to claim peace and love and the higher frequencies we want to bring in here, finding balance that's authentic to us. And when in doubt, inviting that enlightened life force energy of Arcturus, the enlightened life force energy of Reiki, the enlightened life force energy of love, these pure creation energies to support us in our healing work and being beacons and lighthouses and light bearers of the new paradigm, no matter what situation, what tension, what whatever we're walking into, whether it's Walmart or a conference or a meeting or your grocery store or market or the beach or the national park, whatever it is, if it's school, if it's a classroom, wherever you are, just being that that example and that embodiment of balance and love and peace and grounding and stillness when it's right to be still and courageous action when it's right to be courageous and take action there. So remembering that invitation for neutrality can be very helpful in that invitation help me embody balance now. Enlightened Arcturians, you know, Reiki energy, whoever you want to call upon for support in that, that we do have support in this, but this is a very challenging and dynamic time. And to know that that's the collective energy that everybody's interacting with that at various levels of consciousness. So we're likely to see 
various expressions of this. So I invite you to tap into, as always, the higher frequencies of this full moon. Tap into that healing energy. And may it be a wonderful feeling of unlimited possibilities and potentialities and pure magic manifestation, dreams coming true, pathfinding coming true, your gifts and talents revealed, and being that light bringer, that light bearer at your next level, authentic soul expression. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to connect more with me, you can find all the ways to do that on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.